On October 21st, 1978, Australian pilot Frederick Valentich was flying the 125 mile route from Melbourne to Kings Island. The short flight should not have been a difficult one as conditions were good and his plane was in full working order upon takeoff. The Frederick would never make it to Kings Island, as not long into his flight, he seemingly dropped off of the face of the earth, never to be seen again. Though that alone makes this an intriguing mystery, what has truly made this case stand out was the final radio transmission that Frederick sent to air control right before his disappearance. His message was frantic, but clear. He said something was following him in the sky, something not of this world. Now at 20 years old, to put it mildly, Frederick wasn't the best pilot. Sure, he did have 150 hours of in-flight training, and he also had a class four instrument rating, which I think is impressive. I, I don't really know though. But he did have his pilot's license, so he was able to fly freely during the day and under certain conditions at night. So all that might make him seem like a good pilot, but he really wasn't. And I know it sounds like I'm coming at him, but I'm just telling the truth here. And though he was determined to make a living off of his passion for aviation, it really wasn't coming easy for him. With hopes of becoming a commercial pilot, Frederick ended up failing his commercial license examination on five separate occasions, with his most recent coming not even a month before his disappearance. But not only this, in the short amount of time that he had been flying, he had already received three separate citations. Once for straying into a controlled off-limits area, and the other two times for flying blindly into a cloud. Which, how the hell could they have caught him doing that? Like, that is what I want to know. But the most recent of these citations actually ended up landing him in legal hot water. And there was actually a good chance that he was going to be prosecuted for it. And I'm sure the punishment wouldn't have been too terrible, but it definitely would have hindered his already struggling aviation career. But despite his flying struggles, he still had his license and he was still able to fly. And at 6.19 p.m. on October 21st, 1978, he took off for Victoria's Morbin Airport. I am sorry if I mispronounced that. Now on this flight, he was flying a single engine plane directly over the Bass Strait on his way to King Island. And at first, things appeared to be going well. He was making good time, he was on pace, the weather was cooperating, and things just seemed to be going okay. But things were about to change. As the sun began to go down, something strange emerged near Frederick's plane. Confused, he radioed into Melbourne's Air Flight Service. Now this conversation was recorded and transcribed, and the transcription alone is one of the most chilling things I have ever read. But strangely enough, the recording itself seems to have been completely wiped from the internet. And this might be because it was just that terrifying. But despite this, the recording was once available online many years ago, and those who have heard it can attest to how terrifying it really was. So obviously since this thing has been wiped from the internet, we can't really listen to it, which kind of sucks. But we do have the transcriptions, which tell us exactly what was said whilst Frederick was up there, right before he disappeared. And just reading this alone here, it's become clear to me that Frederick may have really seen something otherworldly that day. And lucky for us, people have actually acted out these transcriptions. Um, not saying they're the best, but it is better than me trying to read it. So I am just going to play that for you now. This is Delta Sierra Juliet. Is there any known traffic below 5,000 feet? No known traffic. Seems to be a large aircraft below 5,000 feet. What type of aircraft is it? I cannot confirm. It's bright, seems to me like landing lights. The aircraft has just passed over me at at least a thousand feet above. Is there any Air Force aircraft in the vicinity? No known aircraft in the vicinity. Seems to be playing some sort of game. He's flying over me. Well, the Sierra Juliet, it's not an aircraft, it's... Can you describe the, uh, the aircraft? As it's flying past, it's a long shape. I cannot identify it, it has such speed. 
It's before me right now, Melbourne. How large would the um, the object be? Seems like it's stationary. What it's doing right now is orbiting. The thing is just orbiting on top of me. It's also got a green light and a sort of metallic like. It's shiny on the outside. It's just vanished. That strange aircraft's hovering on top of me again. It's hovering and it's not an aircraft. Now immediately after Frederick said, and it's not an aircraft, a disturbing sound was heard for roughly 17 seconds before the entire transmission cut off. And the sound is best described as some sort of metallic scraping noise. But to this day, nobody is sure of what exactly it was. Now, like I said, I couldn't find the actual tape of this conversation, but this last part with the metallic scraping noises has apparently been clipped and recorded and is still out there online. And actually, a YouTuber by the name of Lily Harper supposedly was able to find the clip itself and upload it to her YouTube channel. So obviously, full credit goes out to her for this next part, but this is supposedly that strange noise captured at the end of the recording. Now this transmission was the last that anyone heard of Frederick, as he disappeared immediately after. He never reached Kings Island, and a full rescue team was sent out in the assumption that he had crashed his plane somewhere in the water. So I'm sitting here editing, like I do, and I realized I've been saying Kings Island, but it's actually King Island. So basically what I'm saying is, I'm sorry. But oddly enough, nothing was ever found of his plane. It seemed to disappear along with Frederick, with no confirmed parts having turned up to this day. Although some people believe that parts were actually found, none of them were ever confirmed 100%. And after just a short while of searching, Frederick Valentich was presumed dead, and the search was halted. So what caused this disappearance, and what was that mysterious object that Frederick saw 5,000 feet in the air? Was that the reason for Frederick's disappearance? Or was his disappearance a case of obsession gone too far? Now, whenever we look at a disappearance of this caliber, we have to at least consider the possibility of suicide. And in this case, it actually kind of makes sense. I mean, Frederick had this dream of becoming a commercial pilot, but he kept failing over and over again. And he would no doubt have been struggling with these failures, and he must have been feeling pretty disappointed at the very least. So could this have set him over the edge? It's possible, and further backing this story is the fact that he had no motive for going to King Island that night. I mean, when providing reasonings for his trip there, he apparently gave conflicting responses. One of them was that he was going to visit some friends, and the other one was that he was going to pick up some crayfish. And this disparity of reasoning may have actually meant that he had no reason to go there. And even further backing this is the fact that Frederick never contacted the King Island Airport, which is like common procedure if you're going to fly somewhere. Like they wouldn't have been expecting him and he probably wouldn't have been able to land. So this might mean he wasn't even planning on making it there. Now, though this theory is really intriguing to me, there are still some flaws that kind of cast doubt on this. Like the fact that by all accounts from friends and family, Frederick seemed to enjoy his life. And to them, he seemed genuinely happy, and the idea of him taking his own life wasn't even in the equation for them. And all this might show us that maybe his aviational failures really didn't bother him that much. I mean, after all, he was young and he still had time to learn and kind of bounce back. But if this suicide theory really is to be believed, then what did he see in the sky that night? Did he truly see a UFO, or was he just trying to go out with a bang? Now, digging through Frederick Valentich's past shows that he had other passions besides aviation. And one of these passions was aliens. It turns out that Frederick had some sort of obsession with UFOs. 
And quick disclaimer, I know that UFOs don't inherently mean aliens, but for the sake of this video, they are going hand in hand. He would gather newspaper clippings of different UFO sightings, and he would constantly be watching television programs on aliens. And this passion all stemmed from the fact that he really believed that UFOs and aliens were out there. And he believed in them because apparently he saw one. According to his dad, Frederick claimed to have seen a UFO on one occasion. And this sighting caused him to become paranoid that what if one day they attacked him? So it's clear that he had a real connection to the topic of UFOs, and some would even call it an obsession. So could this obsession have led him to pull off this kind of elaborate hoax before he took his own life? Maybe. But it's also possible that Frederick never even intended on taking his own life that day. And that he fully intended on returning home with a harrowing story of his UFO encounter. I mean, he was obsessed with UFOs, and a hoax like this would make people really believe in UFOs along with him. And that's actually exactly what ended up happening. While that recording was still available, it was viewed as one of the greatest pieces of evidence to support the existence of aliens ever found. So maybe this was his plan all along. And out of all the theories that we're going to be talking about here, I think this is probably my favorite one. Because the motivation is there. I mean, this hoax would have made him a world famous pilot and he could have cashed in on that story. I mean, think of the books and the TV programs that he could have made money off of by coming home with this story. Also, it would have pushed his narrative forward that aliens really do exist. But if this is truly the case, then where is he now? Well, the sad truth may be that things went wrong while he was trying to pull off this hoax. And that disturbing sound heard at the end of the recording was actually him crashing to his death. I mean, this really could have been a case of obsession that went too far. Because let's be real, if he really did survive, there was no way that he or his plane would have never turned up. I mean, chances are they're probably both at the bottom of the ocean, in a very deep, dark spot. And that sounds morbid, but it's just the truth. Like, he would have turned up by now. But there still remains one theory that can't be ignored. What if Frederick truly encountered a UFO that day? I mean, maybe he was actually abducted by aliens. And interestingly enough, the area that Frederick had disappeared over had experienced a large number of UFO sightings that night, including a now infamous photo of a supposed UFO hovering in the air right where Frederick would have disappeared. And it was taken on that very night. Don't really see it, but it had to be mentioned. And some onlookers who actually saw Frederick's plane that night claim that there was a green light following it. And though there's no way to really tell for sure if these are real, um, I think it's definitely worth mentioning them anyway. And also, not to mention that those who have actually heard the real recording all say the same thing. That it was very disturbing and very real. The panic in his voice was supposedly so chilling that it would have been almost impossible to have faked. And if we're being real, that strange noise heard at the end of the transmission really doesn't sound like a plane crashing into water. It just sounds weird and way more disturbing than that. I mean, maybe this was the sound of Frederick literally getting abducted. Now, also going along with this theory, some people believe that Frederick had actually gone out searching for a UFO that night. And this would explain the lack of motive that he had to go to King's Island, and the fact that he was never gonna land there in the first place. And believers of this theory claim that while he was searching for a UFO, he found one, and obviously it didn't take too kindly to him. So in a way, this theory kind of explains everything, despite the fact that it's obviously a little outlandish. Now this is a fairly popular theory nowadays, but I'll admit it, uh, I'm not really feeling it. The theory is that the UFO that Frederick thought he saw that night was actually just an optical illusion. And some people believe that he was actually just looking at his own plane's reflection because he was flying upside down and he didn't notice. Like I get it, it, it would have been dark then, but really? I mean, my thing is how would you not notice that you're upside down for 10 minutes? I'm no pilot, but come on. And another theory is that the UFO was actually just the stars. He was looking at the stars and he thought they were all, it was a UFO. And maybe because he was such a hardcore believer in UFOs, it kind of caused his mind to fill in the blanks about it. I mean, like, I get it, 
Actually, no, I really don't. I, I do not understand this theory, but plenty of smart people have pointed to this being the reason, so I figured I would bring it up, and maybe if you guys are interested, you can do more research on your own, but it's not really one that I was following along with. And to me, this actually sounds like kind of a reach, but I'm also kind of on board with the UFO theory, so take that for what it's worth. The case of what happened to Frederick Valentich is one that leaves us with more questions than answers. Whether it was a prank gone wrong or an actual case of alien abduction is yet to be known and probably will never be known unless more evidence comes forward. But until then, we're left to wonder what happened to Frederick that night. And we're also left to wonder if maybe somewhere he's still out there.